Hello everyone. Hi. My name is Akash and today we are starting the second session of physics for board Brahmastra. Okay, there is our new series only for grade 10. So if you are in grade 10, aapko pata hai, abhi just recently unhone schedule diya hai. Ab just jao NCRT ki website pe and get the schedule. I think science is on 4th March. Theek hai? Hi everyone. चलो लेट्स स्टार्ट करते हैं फटाफट तो कल जो हमने पढ़ा था मैं क्विकली रिवाइज करूंगा और कुछ क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करेंगे उस बेस पे एंड देन विल स्टार्ट विद द टुडे टॉपिक दैट इज रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट चलो लेट्स बिगिन सो दिस अबाउट मी कल बहुत लोग पूछ रहे थे ना लाइक यू डोंट नो माई नेम सो दिस इज मी माई नेम इज आकाश आकाश गाड़ेकर आई एम फ्रॉम पुणे आई हैव डन पी एच डी इन फिजिक्स फ्रॉम नेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ सिंगापुर आई हैव बी एस एम एस डुअल डिग्री From ISA Pune and I was ranker in IIT JE. जो आप 12 के बाद exam देते हो ना IIT के exam. तो I was ranker in that. So this is about me. अगर किसी को doubt है questions है, you can always come to this slide. All right, let's begin. Okay, these are the top performers. So congrats all Naga, Shayana, then Shifa Khan, Kusum Singh, and Lakshyan. So these are the top performers for yesterday. Top performance means मैंने कुछ criteria set किए। Whenever I give questions, you have to solve the question, give the correct answer in the chat. और ऐसा नहीं कि सिर्फ एक या दो question solve किए। You have to be consistent। मतलब start से लेके end तक आपको रहना है यहाँ पे। ऐसा नहीं कि दो मिनट आगे एक question solve किया और चले गए। If you are consistent for as long as possible for you. So I'll take your name. So these are the top performers for yesterday's class. All right, hi everyone. So देखते हैं आज के top performers कौन होंगे? मैं आपको कल बताऊंगा. तो जो जिसको चाहिए, जिसका नाम board पे आना है, ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा comment करो और जब भी correct answer हो, correct answer आप type करना, है ना? हम बहुत सारे question solve करेंगे. चलो. तो quickly recap कर दें जो हमने कल पढ़ा था. और कुछ क्वेश्चंस उसके बेसिस पे करते हैं आप लोग तो अभी एक्सपर्ट हो गए होंगे आई नो यू आर लाइक एक्सपर्ट नाउ तो चलो देखते हैं क्विकली फटाफट रिकैप करते हैं अ साइन कन्वेंशन साइन कन्वेंशन बहुत सिंपल है देखो ये जो पोल है ना दे इज अ पोल मेक अ लाइन डॉटेड लाइन पासिंग थ्रू द पोल एंड परपेंडिकुलर टू द प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस तो यू कैन सी द फोर क्वार करेक्ट एंड वंस यू सी दीज फोर क्वार साइन कन्वेंशन इज वेरी इजी इन द फर्स्ट क्वार बोथ एक्स एंड वाई पॉजिटिव इन द सेकेंड क्वार एक्स इज नेगेटिव वाई इज पॉजिटिव थर्ड क्वार बोथ आर नेगेटिव फोर्थ क्वार एक्स इज पॉजिटिव वाई इज नेगेटिव तो ये क्यों जरूरी है फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑब्जेक्ट इज हियर राइट दिस ऑब्जेक्ट सो दिस डिस्टेंस इज अवर यू सो यू विल बी नेगेटिव इन दिस केस एंड Object is above the principal axis, so height of the object would be positive. And how about here? This will be our v. Let's suppose the image is formed at this location, so height of the image is below the principal axis. So height of the image kya hogi? It is negative. And v kya hoga? V is also negative for this case. Okay? Hi everyone. Good afternoon everyone. Let's begin. And this was the formula for spherical mirrors i hope you understood the formula yesterday we are going to solve questions based on this and there is one more formula which is formula for magnification this also we have learned yesterday i hope you guys remember how many of you remember this formula for magnification and mirror formula do you remember all right chal chalo dekhte kuch question solve karte fada fad hai na फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करो और अगर आपको टॉप परफॉर्मर बनना है इफ यू वांट मी टू टेक योर नेम गिव द करेक्ट आंसर्स टाइप योर आंसर्स इन द चैट एंड इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास आई विल टेक योर नेम ओके और राइट इन केस ऑफ वर्चुअल एंड इरेक्ट इमेज वर्चुअल एंड इरेक्ट सो टेल मी वेन डू यू गेट द वर्चुअल एंड इरेक्ट इमेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव द कॉन्केव मिरर 
if you place an object here, image will form behind the mirror, correct? So, this is virtual and erect image. Yes? So, for this case, magnification will be, is it positive, negative, infinity or zero? Kya hoga batao? What is magnification? Magnification is height of the image divided by height of the object. So, now just look carefully. Both the object and the image, there is an image. Both of them are above principal axis. Agar dono principal axis ke above hai, height of the image and height of the object dono positive honge. So, if they are positive, the magnification is also positive. Easy? Yes, awesome. Lot of you got correct. Nice, nice. So, very tough combination today. Let's see. Kaun jitta hai? Okay, second question. So, I'll explain you the question first. A child is standing in front of the magic mirror. So, this is a magic mirror hai, which has three parts. For example, let's draw the magic mirror. It has three parts. Part 1, part 2 and part 3. So, there is a child which is standing in front of this mirror. Correct? And what he observes that uh, she finds that image of her head is bigger. So, image of the head is bigger. The middle section is same and the legs are smaller. So, now you have to tell me what is this part from top, middle and bottom. What are these three mirrors? These are three different types of mirrors and all of them are forming virtual and erect image. Bada fada fada. So, the top part it is forming virtual and enlarged image. So, which mirror can form virtual and enlarged image? It is the concave mirror. So, convex and plane, these are wrong. How the second part? The second mirror is forming image which is same size. So, that should be plane, correct? There is also convex, convex is wrong. Okay, we already got the answer. And the third one, it should be image is getting smaller. So, it should be convex. So, this is the correct answer. Nice, nice. So many of you getting correct. Awesome. Great. Next question. For our solve karo. Her question ke liye, I'll give you roughly like 30 seconds. Kyunki crash ko na. So, we need to do little faster. Okay. Agar aapko questions hai, doubts hai, you can type in the chat or later uh, maybe we can connect sometimes like we will plan to arrange some doubt sessions. So, in that if you have some doubts we can discuss there. Okay. So, now rays from the sun are converging at a uh, 15 centimeter in front of the concave mirror. For example, if there is a concave mirror, so rays coming from the sun. So, where is the object? Object is at infinity. If there is an object which is our sun, right? These are the incident rays parallel to the principal axis. They will fall onto the mirror and they converge 15 centimeter in front of a concave mirror. Converge at this point. So, what is this point? Principal focus, correct? So, this length is the focal length. So, tell me what is the focal length? Focal length is 15 centimeter, correct? So, now where should an object be placed? So, that size of the image is equal to size of the object. Badaaf, jaldi se. Where will you place the object? You should place the object at center of curvature. Correct? So, what is this distance from the pole? From the pole, what is this distance? It should be 2 times the focal length. If the focal length is 15 centimeter, the radius would be 2 times focal length. That is how much? 30 centimeter. So, it should be option number B. 30 centimeter in front of the mirror. Correct. Nice. Yes, yeah, so many of you getting correct answer. I am surprised. Nice. So, definitely those who solve maximum correct answer, I will take that person's name in the next class. Tomorrow. Tomorrow 4.15, we will have another session for physics. Next question. 
which type of mirror can have magnification plus one remember this is a plus one magnification कौन सा मिरर है जिसके लिए प्लस वन मैग्निफिकेशन होता है शाइना आई टूक यूर नेम आई थिंक यू ज्वाइन लेट बट यू आर टॉप परफॉर्मर इन यस्टरडेज क्लास नाइस लेट्स सी इफ यू कैन मेंटेन दैट टुडे सो विच टाइप ऑफ मिरर कैन हैव मैग्निफिकेशन प्लस वन सो व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ मैग्निफिकेशन इज इक्वल टू प्लस वन सो मैग्निफिकेशन इज height of the image divided by height of the object this is plus 1 that means height of the image is equal to height of the object so when do you get this if you have plane mirror only for the plane mirror object and image they have equal size so it should be option number c clear yes alfred i'll try to mix both hindi and english because some there are some students who want hindi and some who want english so i'll mix and match okay so that everybody can understand next one magnification due to concave mirror is zero magnification is zero when do you have this so what should be the position of the object who can tell alfred yes alfred correct nice nice so if the magnification is zero that means height of the image divided by height of the object is zero what does it tell you height of the image is zero so when do we have this it is a point size object so when do we get point size object that means the image sorry point size image so image is forming at focus so where should it keep the object so object should be at infinity then only you will get point size image nice next one last couple of questions so we have a concave mirror an object is placed at center of curvature so there is a concave mirror object is placed there is a object at center of curvature there is a focus so what is the magnification what is the magnification so when you place a object at center of curvature you will get the image correct in this case their size are same size of the image is same as size of the object but there is one catch here you know what is the catch height of the object and there is a height of the image so image is below the principal axis if image is forming below the principal axis what does it mean it means height of the image is negative height of the object is positive so what is the magnification here magnification which is height of the image divided by height of the object will be it is going to be minus 1 if you take correct sign convention magnification is minus 1 correct nice nice shaina you are doing great awesome i cannot do that alfred i'm really sorry for that we'll try next time okay so all this is a numerical question these type of questions might come in your exam and this would be like something from either 3 to 5 marks depending on how many sub questions are there okay depending on how many sub questions or what is the difficulty level so it can be for 3 marks as well as 5 marks okay all right let's i'll explain the question an object 4 cm in size so height of the object is given as 4 cm it is placed 25 cm in front of concave mirror so we have a concave mirror and where is the object placed 25 cm so what is u u is the object distance which is 25 cm but this u is going to be negative because the object is placed left of the mirror so this is minus 25 so the focal length is 15 but this is a concave mirror do you know focal length for the concave mirror is negative do you guys remember yes so focal length is 
minus 15 centimeter correct focal length for the concave mirror is negative so now what you have to find out where should you place a screen so you have to place a screen that means it is forming real and inverted image correct in order to get a sharp image so that means we need to find what is v so can you calculate what is v tell me what is v here and then we also have to find nature nature would be real and inverted and then we have to calculate size of the image so that is height of the image these two quantities you need to calculate i'll erase this i'll need some space here okay let's do it how will you find v and h height of the image real and inverted correct ram yeah it is too far i am not able to see your names anyways ram correct so how will you answer this we have this formula 1 by v plus 1 by u is 1 by f correct for the mirror this is for the mirror concave mirror not a lens so we have to calculate 1 by v which is 1 by f minus 1 by u so what is f f is given as minus 15 so it is 1 divided by minus 15 and minus what is u minus 25 minus 25 so this minus minus will be plus what is the lcm of 15 and 25 lcm is going to be 75 so this 15 into 5 so minus 5 plus 3 so this is minus 2 by 75 this v 1 by v correct so what is the value of v so v is equal to minus 75 by 2 centimeter which is minus 37.5 centimeter okay correct correct nice and now what we want to find out height of the image how will you calculate height of the image tell me how will you calculate height of the image very easy do you remember magnification formula magnification is height of the image divided by height of the object which is minus v by u correct so we want to calculate height of the image so height of the image would be minus v by u times height of the object so solve it and tell me the answer what is v v is my minus 37.5 what is u u is given as minus 25 minus 25 this is multiplied by height of the object which is 4 centimeter correct this 4 centimeter so this minus minus you can cancel out so what is this 37.5 divided by 25 this is nothing but 3 by 2 so it is minus 3 by 2 multiplied by 4 which will come out to be minus 6 centimeters so it is negative height of the image is negative that means the image is inverted real and inverted correct and the size of the image is 6 centimeter all right any questions anyone so now let's go to the next topic that is our today's topic this was until now the revision kind of we didn't get much time yesterday right to solve the numericals so that's how we solved okay great so now today we are going to our learning about refraction of light so how many of you know what is refraction naga do you know what is refraction villain john villain red john red i know this name i think there is a mentalist right some tv series red john was a villain in that yeah i keep watching all the tv series all right let's understand refraction of light so you must have seen okay first answer this what are the different transparent objects out of this what is transparent object transparent object is something through which light can pass through so these are multiple correct are mirror transparent no mirrors are not transparent they reflect the light shiny walls even these are not transparent how about glass yes glass and air so light can pass through them so these are called as transparent objects correct yes 
light should pass through them these are called as transparent objects correct so now have you seen if you drop pencil in the water at the boundary it appears that pencil is broken or if you draw the ray diagrams at the boundary you see the rays are getting the rays are bending near the boundary so why does it happen what is the property of light which property of light change when the light travels from one medium to another transparent medium which property of light change do you know bending of light yes that is correct but which property of light change when the light travels from water to air okay i'll tell you it is the speed of light is different and before that let's learn few more things and then we'll come to the speed of light so this is the one medium air this is another medium glass so there is a incident ray and there is a refracted ray earlier we have reflection now it is refraction so ray is going to the other medium from one medium to other medium correct and this point is called as point of incidence where this incident ray meets the boundary between the two medium this dotted line is called as normal this angle is called as angle of incidence and there is a angle of refraction i guess you guys know these terms okay yes tune wahi bola tha correct <laughs> yes speed of light is different correct so now there are two laws of refraction which are similar to reflection the first law is similar to the second law of reflection so what is this it says that the incident ray normal and the refracted ray all three of them are in the same plane so again this refracted ray cannot come out of the plane or cannot go into the plane it has to be within this plane that is the first law of refraction what is the second law the second law of refraction is also called as snail's law why snail's law because snail was a scientist who discovered snail was a scientist who discovered this law so we call him we call this law as a snail's law so what does it say for a given pair of media media is a plural of medium if there are more than one medium we call it as media this ratio is constant sign of the angle of incidence to the sign of the angle of refraction is constant for the given pair of medium for example here this is the angle of incidence angle of refraction if you take the sign i hope you guys have learned trigonometry so what is sign if you know in trigonometry if this is a right angle triangle if this is angle theta and let's suppose i'll call this as a b c what is sin theta sin theta is nothing but opposite side which is ab divided by hypotenuse which is ac correct so this is how the sign or cos these terms are defined so if you take sign of the angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction this ratio is always going to be constant and it is valid for if the angle of incidence is between 0 and 90 can you tell me why it is not valid at 0 degree or at 90 degree why you cannot use this formula if the angle of incidence is either 0 or 90 okay for the first one i'll explain if there is a normal if the incident ray is along the normal incident ray coming along the normal for this case angle i is equal to 0 degree if the angle of incidence is 0 degree ray will pass without any deviation without any bending this is the only angle for which there is no bending of light correct so this formula or this term will be sin 0 by 0 so it would be something like sin of 0 divided by sin of 0 and what is this ratio it is 0 divided by 0 which is not defined correct this 0 by 0 is not defined so that is why the angle of incidence should be greater than 0 degrees and why it should be less than 90 can somebody tell me why angle of incidence should be less than 90 degree for example 
if I have this boundary, the incident ray, this would be the incident ray. Is it visible? This would be the incident ray. So now this is a normal, this angle is 90. So if the angle of incidence is 90, this ray will pass without any, it will not go into the other medium, it will just pass along the boundary. So that is why even this 90 degree is not possible. So the angle of incidence should be between this range, okay, understood, clear. Hi Vaishnavi, good evening, John, Villan, Vaishu, correct, alright. So now there is a term called as optical density, do you know what is optical density? So it is defined in such a way, let us suppose there is an incident ray going from medium 1 to medium 2, if the incident ray bends towards the normal, if the incident ray is bending towards the normal, where this color is not visible, wait, incident ray is bending towards the normal, then we say that this is optically denser medium and this one is optically rarer, correct, optically rarer medium to optically denser medium then only light ray will bend towards the normal and let us suppose if the incident ray is going from there is an incident ray going from one medium to another medium if it bends away from the normal if the incident ray bends away or the refracted ray bends away from the normal we say that again this one is a denser medium this one is rarer medium so there are these n1 and n2 do you know what are these N1 and N2? So we are going to define that. What is N1? What is N2? These are called as refractive index of the medium. So let us learn about the refractive index. Do you guys know what is refractive index? Your name is Priyanka. Hi Priyanka. Yeah, you should write your names then I will know, right? And do you know competition? The person who can solve maximum questions who can comment their uh, answers in the chat. So after the class, we will go through your chat and we will check who has given maximum correct answer. That person would be like a top performer for the day. I will put up their names in my next class, okay, alright. So now let us understand what is refractive index, how the refractive index is defined as. So the speed of light in vacuum is this much, there is a maximum speed of light. Light cannot be or any object cannot be travelling faster than this speed. There is a maximum speed. But what happens when the light travels in different medium, when the light travels from one medium to another medium, the speed of light changes. And this is how the refractive index is defined as N is a symbol for refractive index. What is C? C is the speed of light in vacuum and what is V? V is the speed of light in that particular medium. So V will always be less than C, V is always less than C and because of that if you divide both sides by C, okay, if you divide both sides by V, then what do you get? If I divide this by V, this is V by V which is 1 which is less than C by V and what is C by V? N. So the refractive index of the medium is always greater than 1, okay. Alright, so how the refractive index is defined as? Let us suppose one of the medium is vacuum and there is a other medium. So when the light travels from vacuum to some medium, the speed of light changes, correct. So you know this ratio sin i by sin r which was given by the snail. So you can equate this to this ratio which is the formula for refractive index and this refractive index is called as absolute refractive index. Now own the school, oh, you study in the school, okay nice, shadow is faster, yeah I do not think so, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, so that is the maximum for all the object even for the shadow I do not think it can travel faster than speed of light, okay. So now this C is defined as this one and V is always less than speed of light. 
So that's how we get the refractive index value. So can you solve this question? I want answers in the chat. Everyone, very easy question. Why can't anything travel faster? For that, you need to learn Einstein's relativity, special relativity. Learn about it, then you can get the answer. Okay. So what is given speed of light in a medium? So V in the medium is 2 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Correct. So what is the refractive index of the medium? So refractive index N is defined as C by V. What is C? 3 into 10 raised to 8 divided by 2 into 10 raised to 8. So what is the refractive index? It is 3 by 2. Okay. That is option number B. Correct, John. Nice. John is going to win, I guess. Best performer award. Okay, let's see. So now, how the relative refractive index is defined as? Do you know? So, relative refractive index. If none of these medium, N1 and N2, none of them is vacuum. So for that case, we are going to have the relative refractive index and what is relative refractive index so it is n to 1 how do you read this it is the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 this is how you read it and how it is written n to 1 is nothing but n2 by n1 n2 and n1 are the absolute refractive indices of these two medium okay and this you equate with the snail's law which is sin i by sin r. This ratio is always going to be constant. Correct? Do you know any better way to rewrite this formula? Because sometimes even I get very confused. Which one is, which one will you consider in angle of incidence or which one will be angle of refraction? Sometimes it is not very clear if you look at the question. For example, we will come back to this. For example, here, if you have to rewrite this equation, can you tell me, can you answer this? which of the following will have greater refractive index. Yeah, solve this question and when we solve, I will tell you how to write the better way, the snail's law. Light bends because the speed of light change, math science, the speed of light change when the light travels from one medium to another medium, that is the reason light bends. Okay, so now, which of the, these are the two absolute refractive index, N1 and N2. Can you tell me which one is a denser medium and which one is a rarer medium? You just have to find out which one is denser, which one is rarer. You see here, if you consider this as an incident ray and this one as a refracted ray, so this refracted ray is going away from the normal, correct? If the ray is going away from the normal, that means this medium is rarer and this one would be denser. So what is the meaning of denser medium? It means the refractive index is greater. Refractive index is greater for the denser medium. So N1 is greater than N2. This one is correct formula, correct answer. Okay. So I told you to rewrite the snail's law in a better form. So how to write this? It is n1. If let's say you are, there is a medium 1 and there is medium 2. So if the light is going from medium 1 to medium 2, first medium refractive index of the first medium multiplied by sine of the, this angle. Let's suppose we have i is equal to, now we are going to the second medium. So n2 multiplied by sine of the, this angle R, correct? So this is how, this is a better way. So now you can write sine I by sine R is nothing but N2 by N1, which is N21, okay? So this way you can remember things very easily, correct? You don't have to worry about which one is angle of incidence, which one is angle of refraction. Light can go from this direction. This would be the incident ray. This would be the refracted ray. Still, 
you can get this formula okay so now we skipped couple of pages we'll go back okay solve this question is it constant network oh because of the network problem you couldn't uh, saw the class continuously it's okay sometimes it happens but i'll suggest if you couldn't uh, be there continuously whenever you get some free time watch the concept which you couldn't watch during the live session okay you can rewatch it again and again all right so absolute refractive index of the medium other than vacuum what will be the absolute refractive index so we know n is c divided by v and we know c that is the speed of light in vacuum is always the maximum speed nothing can travel more than this speed this was proven by einstein not me by einstein okay the great one and v is the speed of light in the medium so light will always be slower in other medium so because of that this ratio will always be greater than 1 what about electricity numericals yeah when we learn electricity we'll solve those numericals okay all right so you see these are the absolute refractive index table for air it is very close to 1 still not 1 the ref absolute refractive index for vacuum is 1 absolute 1 for every other medium it is greater than 1 and for diamond there is a maximum until now whatever metals we have discovered diamond has a maximum refractive index for water it is approximately 1.33 for glass it is approximately 1.5 okay so you really you don't have to remember this they will give you in questions you can remember for water for glass yeah even yeah for air you can remember other things you don't have to remember okay all right so next topic is rectangular glass lab do you know do you have this rectangular glass lab in your house i guess everyone will have right some of the other glass piece hi manu good evening clara thomas you didn't understand the previous question which one this one you didn't understand okay so what is the speed of light it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second correct this is the maximum speed of light for other medium speed of light would be much less than c correct this is do you know this because when the light passes from one medium to another medium speed of light reduces and because of that if you divide both sides of this equation by v this c by v what is c by v is nothing but the refractive index so this n which is greater than 1 so that is how the refractive index is always greater than 1 okay nice so let's learn about rectangular glass slab you know why it is rectangular because all the side all the other corners should be 90 then only whatever we are going to prove it is only valid for rectangular glass slab if the angles are not 90 then whatever i am going to tell you next is not valid so watch carefully okay so let's draw it this is a rectangle correct it has four angles which are 90 these four angles so now if there is a incident ray there is incident ray falling at an angle so you can draw a normal this one is the normal you can go to the other side there is a angle of incidence correct so now this is air and this glass so at this point will the light bend towards the normal or away from the normal when the light goes from air to glass what do you think light will bend because glass is a denser optically denser medium so light will this would be i'll draw the path of the incident ray if let's say there is a path of the incident ray if there was no glass slab but because of the glass slab this ray will bend towards normal this one is called as refracted ray correct 
and at this point now the ray is going from glass to air so at this point we can again draw the normal at this point okay so when the light goes from glass to air it will bend away from the normal so this is this is called as angle of emergence and this one is called as emergent ray this one is refracted ray this one is called as angle of refraction let's suppose r1 so this one will be r2 correct there is a r2 r1 angles this is angle of emergence so now if it is a rectangular glass slab these two rays they are parallel so there is a shift there is a lateral shift between the two rays the incident ray and the emergent ray they are going to be parallel to each other correct so can you write let's write some equations do you want to write some equations here i'll prove this e is equal to i do you know how you want to know so at this point let's call it this point as a and let's call this point as b so now because this is a rectangular glass slab this normal let's call it as n n prime and this another normal m m prime correct these normals are parallel to the sides so they are parallel to each other correct and because of that you see if these are the two parallel lines this one here is r1 this one is r2 so what are these angles these are alternate angles correct so r1 must be equal to r2 r1 is equal to r2 yes this is a first equation remember this and now at this point a we can write the equation using the snell's law that is the refractive index of the glass can be written as do you know the general way i told you right how to write the snell's law in the general form we can write in that form okay i'll write it here i don't want to go there so it is 1 which is the refractive index of glass multiplied by sin i which is equal to the now for the glass refractive index is let's call it as n for the air refractive index is 1 okay so it is n times sin r1 so from this equation you can write n is equal to sin i by sin r1 let's call it as equation number 2 okay this is equation number 2 this was our equation number 1 so at point b can you again write the snell's law so light is going from glass to air so again refractive index of glass which is n multiplied by sin of the r1 sorry r2 so it is sin r2 this should be equal to sin of the angle of emergence so it is sin of e correct so again using this equation you can write n is equal to sin e divided by sin r2 yes we can write this so now call it as equation number 3 so compare equation 3 and equation 2 the left hand side of these 2 and 3 equal so right hand side should be equal yes so we can write sin i by sin r1 divided uh, equal to sin e by sin r2 okay so now use this equation 1 r1 is equal to r2 so sin of their angles must be equal so we can cancel this correct if r1 is equal to r2 sin of the angle sin r1 should be equal to sin r2 yes so we can cancel these terms so what do you get sin i is equal to sin e if the sin of the angles are equal that means angle i should be equal to angle e so this angle of emergence should be equal to angle of incidence and this is possible only when it is a rectangular glass slab so only for the rectangular glass slab sin angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence and that is the reason these rays these are parallel the incident ray and the refracted ray they are going to be parallel to each other okay 
great so there's a diagram if you want this will be coming in your pdf so do you guys know after every class whatever we have done we'll convert that into pdf and we'll share into the insta uh, sorry somebody written instagram into the telegram channel so we'll share this in your telegram channel so you can have all this pdf not just this we'll have the questions whatever i have taught today we'll have the question based on that and you will get in the telegram channel if light falls perpendicular so for example if the light is falling perpendicular it will pass without any deviation it will just pass without any deviation correct why will it pass because angle of incidence is equal to 0 degree and just now we prove angle of emergence which is also equal to 0 degree so there is no bending of light okay well you will get this all these notes and all the questions at the end of the session will be shared in the telegram channel all right let's solve few questions profit i'll have some water all right who got the correct answer nobody i guess till now there is some delay for 10 seconds so i can see your chat only after 10 seconds okay so there are four students a b c d they have traced the path of light through the rectangular glass slab and they marked angle of incidence angle of refraction angle of emergence okay these are the four students and their drawings so which of the following observation is correct it is multiple correct so choose all the correct options in the first one look at this there is no bending of light is this correct there is no bending this is not correct how the second one this is from air to glass when the light goes from air to glass it is bending towards normal when the light goes from glass there is air it is bending away so this drawing is correct option b is correct how about option number c here there is air glass air light is going from air to glass so it is bending towards normal correct then going from glass to air bending away from normal so even this one is correct how about the last one look at this there is no bending of light so there is wrong there should be bending of light when the light travels from one medium to another medium there has to be or there must be bending of light correct great solve this question so the lateral displacement we have to understand do you know what is lateral displacement the displacement between incident ray and the emergent ray that is called as lateral displacement so is this the correct lateral displacement no this is not the this one is like none of them is incident ray here here this should be the incident ray correct and there is a emergent ray so this is not the lateral displacement even wrong how about this one yes there is a incident ray incident ray and this one is the emergent ray so this is a correct lateral displacement correct option how about this one also not correct so only correct option is option number c nice gumball awesome gumball correct vaishnavi b no vaishnavi it is option number c okay so now the last topic from this chapter is spherical lens today will not go much details into the spherical lens this is like an introduction to the spherical lens correct and tomorrow we'll understand the spherical lens in more details so if you have if you want to learn about spherical lens i'll have another session tomorrow at 4:15 so today is introduction so let's understand what are the spherical lens so there are two types of spherical lens convex and concave how do you know which one is convex which one is concave you see here at the center convex lens they are thicker they are broader so even this one is a convex lens first and the third these are convex and how concave at the middle these are thinner concave lens they are thin at the center 
they are thick at the corners. These convex lenses they are called as converging and the concave lens they are diverging. We are going to learn that now. Are you told correct? Okay, maybe I misread. No worries. No, I will not cut any marks. Okay, do not worry about it. Okay, so now this is a convex lens. Can you see at the center? This is a convex lens. So, there are two reflecting surfaces surface number 1, surface number 2 and both of these surfaces are part of a sphere. So, this surface 1 is part of this sphere, the surface 2 here is a part of another sphere and because these are two reflecting surfaces, there are two center of curvature C1 and C2. Not just that, there are two radius of curvature R1 and R2, correct? So, there are two poles P1 and P2, this one is P1 and this one here is P2, correct? And what is this O? O is the optical center, which is the center of the lens, center of this spherical lens. And what is the principal axis? It is the axis which join C1 and C2. This line, imaginary line is called as principal axis, correct? Yes, glass sphere, correct? So, now this is for the convex lens, exactly same thing for the concave lens, but this is very general case and it is too difficult to study these, these type of lenses. So, we will make some assumption, we will choose R1 is equal to R2. So, these radius, they should be equal, then only we can, we are making your life simpler. In 12th, when you go to the 12th. So, this R1 and R2 will be different and there will be different equations, but right now the easier one we consider this to be equal and not just that, there is one more. You see there are different types of lenses, we are not going to study all of them, only specific. This one is called as biconvex and this one is biconcave, biconcave and biconvex. So, we are going to study only these biconvex and biconcave, not these ones. These ones are little difficult. When you study, when you go to 12th class, you will study even these two, okay? All right. So, now let us understand more about these lenses. So, there are few terms. This center is called as optical center. It is the same for both of them, both of these lenses. Then there is F1, C1. F2, C2, correct? But do you, we know from the mirror that radius of curvature is 2 times the focal length, correct? So, that is why this C1 can also be written as 2 times F1 or this C2 can be written as 2 times F2. So, we already taken care of this equation, okay? All right. So, now these are the two lenses, biconvex, bi by convex lens, by concave lens. So, the incident rays parallel to the principal axis after refraction what happens? They converge. So, that is why this is called as converging lens, converge, correct? And this point is called as principal focus. How about this lens? The incident rays which are parallel to the principal axis, they diverge, they go away from each other, that is diverging and they appear to diverge from a single point, that point is called as principal focus, correct? So, that is why this one is called as converging lens and concave is also called as diverging lens. Why any proof? Because we assumed, there is a proof for it, but you will need some higher maths. We do not go into the details, you will learn that in 12th. We assume that this R1 is equal to R2, correct? If these two are not equal, then we cannot have this. We cannot use R is equal to 2 times F. This is not possible. But because we are choosing R1 is equal to R2, so that is the reason we can have R is equal to 2 times F. There is a proof for it, but you will have to learn more advanced maths for it and you will learn it in grade 12th, okay? Okay. So, now these are the three important rays. We will only learn these today. 
and whatever after that we will learn in the tomorrow session. So, first ray which is parallel to the principal axis, there is an incident ray parallel to the principal axis. What will happen after refraction? It will pass through the focus. Incident ray parallel to the principal axis pass through the focus. So, I am again repeating you just learn these three rays. If you learn these three rays, this is like a, your Brahmastra. You learn only these three rays, all the concepts or all the problems for this lens chapter will be easy. You can solve all of them, that I can guarantee. So, just focus on these three rays. The first one, we studied incident ray parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through the focus, correct? And you should draw proper ray diagram, something like you give to F1, F1, like when you have to draw, because this is your subjective test, right? It is not an objective. So, you have to mark all of this. You have to take proper measurements. So, this measurement from the optical center to F1, this is your focal length, correct? And this is 2 times the focal length, 2F. So, you have to draw it correctly. Then only your ray diagrams will be correct. Then the second one, a second ray which is passing through the optical center. If the ray passes through the optical center, it will pass without any deviation, no deflection, no deviation. Ray is just going as if there is no change in the medium, okay? Ray diagram is wrong, okay? Maybe it is wrong, we will uh, figure it out in the next class, okay? The third one, a ray is passing through the focus. So, what will happen to it? when the ray is passing through the focus, after refraction it would be parallel to the principal axis. Alright? It is bending? Yes. Okay, so there is one more assumption. For example, if I consider a thicker lens, if there is a thick lens and if there is a principal axis, so there is a incident ray, correct? So, at this point, at this point what will happen? You have to draw a normal. So, this is a normal ray will bend towards the normal, correct? It will go at this point and after here again you have to consider a normal here and ray will be going away from the normal, something like this. This is a correct ray diagram, but there is one more thing we are considering that these are thin lens. This thickness is very small. So, this distance is very small compared to the focal length. So, we are only considering thin lens. Speak in Hindi, okay, I will try. So, we are here convex lenses study kar rahe, hai? Mini, mini pagal, grade 10, okay, small pagal, right? Okay, nice. So, we are considering only the thin lens. If you consider thicker lens, whatever we are studying, these are the assumptions. You will study the other like if it is thicker lens, there are very different equations. You cannot solve the equations using simple equations. They are only valid if the lens is thin. Understood now? Somebody was saying something? Okay, anyways. So, now there is a third type of ray. These were for convex. How about for the concave? For the concave, these are the incident rays parallel to the principal axis. So, they will diverge and they appear to diverge from the single point, we call it as a focus, correct? Then the second ray is a ray which is passing through the optical center. It will, okay, this one is directed towards the focus. So, it will pass, it would be parallel to the principal axis. And the third ray, the one which is passing through the optical center, it will pass without any deviation. So, just remember these three rays. Again, there are several assumptions. Do you remember all the assumptions? First assumption was R1 is equal to R2, which is R. Correct? So, we are only studying the simpler, easier lens, which are biconvex or biconcave. And there is this assumption. Second assumption was these are thin lens. These are thin lenses. If it is a thicker lens, all whatever equations that we are going to study, won't be applicable. There are different types of equations, okay? You are from Sri Chaitanya, nice, nice to have you here. Alright, 
last question of the day. So, in which of the following image of an object placed at infinity? So, object is placed at infinity is highly diminished and point size. Whenever you place an object at infinity, it does not matter whether it is concave mirror, convex lens, convex mirror, concave lens, all of them are correct. All of them will have a image which is point size, image will form at the focus. Yeah, there are different lenses, Vashisht, there are different equations for those kind of lens, we are not going to study that. Okay? Now, this is your homework, we'll, you can take a screenshot and we will uh, solve this question in the next class. Alright, so everything will you will get in the telegram channel, all these PDFs and everything you will get in the telegram channel. That is it for today, thank you so much, bye bye, enjoy everyone. Okay, so tomorrow again there will be maths and physics session, join 3 pm for the math session and after that we will continue with the physics session. Alright, that is it for today, thank you so much, bye bye.